When I first met batiks, I didn't know what to do with them. But since then, I've learned a lot. So keep watching. Hi, it's Donna Robertson and Fran Morgan with Fabric Cafe. And we are so excited to be here today. Today, we are going to have a batik challenge. Now, I have to tell you a secret. I taught Fran how to sew. Yes. Fran taught me how to coordinate fabric. <laughs> did you know that? I didn't know that yes, because I thought did. I learned from you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we first started putting fabric together for kits, I would get things together and I'd go, I don't, I don't know if this looks good. I mean, I was very, well, I guess I could say I was very intimidated because she was so good with color. But I have to admit, I, I'm a quick learner and I love coordinating fabric. Yes. It's one of my favorite things to yes. do. And so when uh, Hannah came and asked us if we would like to do a batik challenge, I thought that would be a good one because I know in the beginning, batiks were hard for me. Did you find them hard? They are a little bit challenging. I think you really need to focus on the contrast a little more. And I think often we need some extra help in determining whether there's actually contrast there between the fabrics. That is a really good point. And one of the things that we're going to share with you today is how to figure out the contrast in batiks. And you can get contrast either with light, medium, and dark, or what I say is just color contrast. So they might be the same kind of colors. Um, no, they might be different colors and be able to get the contrast that way. And we have different examples of this all through the show. Yeah. So we are having a challenge and we do not get our feelings hurt. <laughs> it's okay for you to tell us which ones you like best. Please do, we yes. do wanna know. So let's get started. So this is our challenge. Hannah gave us three bolts of fabric, and each bolt we had to take and put two other fabrics with it. So we ended up with three kits each. Yes. Each one of those, or a total of six, each one of those kits has a common fabric, and we will point that out when we show you what the challenge fabric was. And it was a lot of fun. It really, really was a lot of fun, and it's surprising how close we got but not identical i think that was kind of interesting so and it probably has a lot to do with the focus or the it's not necessarily the focus but the fabric that was the challenge fabric and how you pull the fabrics together that's true because i mean you can't get too far off if it if you've got a blue piece of fabric i mean you're not going to just right. ignore that totally <laughs> right so now let's look at the very first quilt and i get to go first okay you know age before beauty uh, a beauty before <laughs> age? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get started. And this one is called Diamond Dust. And Diamond Dust is one that I designed for the Modern Views um, book a few years ago. But it's remained a popular one with a tiny bit of challenge. So it's sort of like a half square triangle, but it's called a half rectangle. So let's put that up on the table. And this one especially in requires a really good high contrast and I have pieces and parts for you today. So we will look at that. But first of all, let's talk about the fabric that I chose. Our challenge fabric were, was this uh, fabric with the butterflies. And I really liked that fabric. And I just immediately said, well, I want a lighter blue and a, and a green. And I went looking and you can see all of our gorgeous fabrics. And about half of them over here are uh, batiks. So I went looking for fabrics and I knew I needed high contrast because if you look over here at this quilt, you're gonna see this very light color. You're going to see a darker color and then you're gonna see the darkest color. And this really depends on that high contrast. So one way you can get that is to take a photograph of the picture and turn it into black and white. And we do have a video on how to do that as well. And it's photographing the fabrics that you choose, right? Right. Okay. So when you choose okay. your fabric, then you can uh, actually take that picture and look at it. So here's a picture of my uh, fabrics, three fabrics right here and how it changes. Wonderful. And we turn that, we take that picture and then we turn it to black and white and then it really stands out the contrast between the two. Much more, much Perfect. more. That's cool. Okay, so this is our, our focus fabric right here and that's going to go in the number one spot in your quilt. 
The number two fabric is what I say is your background fabric. So it's going to cause the darker colors to pop off of the surface of the uh, quilt. So this is our number two fabric. And then this is our number three fabric. And I really liked those greens together oh, because gorgeous. it picks up all the shades that are in this from the dark to the light in this particular particular fabric. Now let's look at the um, pieces and parts that I did for you. Now this is a little bit of a trick whenever you're doing a half rectangle and we have a video on that so be sure to check it out. To start with you're going to see that you have to put your fabric the way I describe it as cockeyed. You actually have to turn it so that black is one piece of fabric and then the top one is just turned so that you're going to sew from corner to corner. And it looks a little crazy, but it's not hard at all. You're gonna make two. You wanna sew from this corner to this corner, and then from this corner to that corner. And what that does is it creates the reverse image of the half square, half rectangle, <laughs> half rectangle. Okay, let's get my pieces and parts out here. And first of all, this is what it looks like once you cut them. So you, you make your corner to corner as I, s I showed you. And then we also have a trick on how to trim them. Now this is the number one and the number two. So that is going to go right up here. And it takes four of these to make the complete block. So we're going to have that one here. And then this one here. And this does still have the seam allowances. I'm going to make them match up, but this will be a little bit smaller, so it'll be the same size block. Isn't that cool? Oh, wow, that is gorgeous. It's I, cool. I like the way I this can't one is. I to see the next block. Okay, here. so let me show you the next one. I'm going to put that card there so it'll block out the purple so you can really get the good looking. Now this one, as you see here, the light and the dark, it has to be placed this way. So it's actually reversing where the placement of the light is, where the light is here and here. So this one is going to go right here. And then we're going to put this one here. You can see it's not complicated at all. And then this one, well, I kind of got them a little bit high because of those seam allowances. So let me pull them down a little bit more. And there you have that awesome wow. look of the, the diamond dust. So gorgeous. And you know what I really like about this fabric too? Um, the print on the fabric kind of looks like a flower garden, which kind of coordinates with the butterflies mm -hmm. really well. I yeah, like that. I like that too. Okay, so this kit is called um, Gentle Morning. It's 8021831 Diamond Dust. And it's from the book Modern Views, or you can get an individual uh, pattern for that as well. Now, remember, you can get a book free whenever you buy three kits, or you can take one free pattern with each kit. So now it's Fran's turn, and Fran is going to tell us all about her challenge. So my challenge fabric for the butterfly bundle is using the pattern Pinwheel Party, which I really like this one. And you can see it's also made in batik. So I'm going to give you a little different uh, option here. But it's a fun little pinwheel that's been bordered and then just a very, very simple block. So let's put that on the table and look at the fabric. I really liked this butterfly fabric that Hannah chose for us. I thought it was just such a perfect one mm -hmm. for the challenge. And it's actually in a colorway that's one of my very, very favorites. I love the blues and the greens together. And one of the things I really love is the blue, the green, and the purple. So I kind of took some liberties uh -huh. and did it kind of the way I like to do it. <laughs> well, that's what the challenge is all about. <laughs> right. <laughs> of course, I guess. So um, the focus fabric on the pinwheel party is going to go in the center square here. And then it's going to also mm -hmm. fall on the border. So it's really going to help that pop from mm -hmm. the quilt, which I really, really like, because it is a little bit bigger print than the other two. Now, I went and did a little bit more of a limey green on mine. And if you can see, there is that lighter limey green in the batik, and that's how I chose to pull that out. And it's so funny because it also has that um, kind of a 
blue green dark color that oh, I picked so it, it brings out both of those it's perfect it really is so this green is going to go in the background here it'll be in your pinwheel and so that's going to really help the pinwheels pop because our number three now I went a little bit more purple on mine because I really thought that was great together. That and is. This has just a little bit of a metallic on mm -hmm. it. So it kind of, I thought, looked like the dust from butterfly wings. Oh, that's <laughs> good. And it has that blue green in it too. It does. I just love it together. So then our, our number three fabric will border here and then also be in the pinwheels there. I think the contrast on this one is great. Yeah, and you know, sometimes it's really easy to see the contrast just looking at the fabrics mm -hmm. together. But it never hurts to do that cool phone trick to take the picture, change it to black and white, just to see just how contrasty it is. So that's pretty cool. I think that's one of the tricks that you taught me in such a way that helped me with batiks even more. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, it, it really helps. So if you haven't tried it, do it. So the kit information on this one is 8021832. The kit name is Butterfly Breeze. We suggest the pattern Pinwheel Party from Quick as a Wink. And the alternate pattern that we recommend is Pinwheel Plus One. Great. Okay, well, I get to go next. Let us know which one you like. Oh, yes, you have to vote. Okay, so let me tell you what I've got next. So I picked this one also from the uh, Modern Views book. This one is called Illusions. And whenever I did this particular quilt pattern, I just had fun with it because I wanted something that basically spread the color out completely all over the quilt. So I used exactly the same block, but I moved the fabrics one, two, and three to a different spot. So you can see here, you've got your light center, your red, and your blue. And then you've got your red, your blue, and your white. So I just did a little reverse and it was just so much fun to make this quilt. But let's see how I picked fabrics for the batiks for this one because I think it would be gorgeous in batiks. Yes. Now this particular one, this was our challenge fabric, this gorgeous red. Well, it has a lot of pink undertones and I think this is so funny because you picked a purple to go with your last kit and I picked a purple to go with this because I think these are just really rich jewel tones and I liked them. Gorgeous. Where this has a purpley red mm -hmm. undertone and I think you'll get you'll see the the uh, fact that in this one these are probably uh, pretty similar in nature mm -hmm. but we're using color to get the contrast this time right. Right. so the number one fabric would be the uh, red and you can see the number two fabric picks up those undertones of, of the uh, pink and it will be so good for that contrast when you have the red and the uh, white right side, I mean the red and red the pink, pink side by side. And then the purple is going to be your number three fabric. And I love those dots. Those are <laughs> awesome. So much fun. And I just want to point out something here. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting. So here you have a red that has all kinds of variations of pinks, reds, purples, even a little bit of oranges in it. And with batiks, you have such a broad range of color mm -hmm. in the batik that sometimes I think that may be what maybe makes someone feel hesitant because they don't know what direction to go. You know, when we pull these, we just take our fabric and walk up and when something pops or something mm -hmm. blends, we just kind of know because you can see it. We have to go and put it with a whole bunch of different things to see. And one of the things that I tell people sometimes when whenever we've been out teaching and somebody says, I have so much trouble uh, matching up fabric. I explain to them that it you need the practice. Not only do you need to do what Fran said, where you kind of put your colors up against each other and see like, oh my gosh, there is purple in this yeah. uh, particular fabric. Yeah. Uh, it's good to go ahead and allow yourself, and with three yard quilts, it's affordable for you to go ahead and make some quilts because they go together fast, and the more you quilt and the more you put things together, the better you're going to get with color coordination. So this particular kit is called Jewels 8021833. Illusions is the name of the pattern. It's from the book uh, Modern Views, and you can either take a single pattern or buy three kits and get the book. 
Now the kit, that, the pattern that I chose for my challenge is It's a Snap. And I have to say that this is one of my very favorite designs that mom has done. I just love the movement in it and thought it would be perfect for my challenge kit for the red. So let's look at that. And I went just a little bit different with my red. So as I was saying, I was taking my challenge fabric, which is the red here, and I was walking the shelves and looking for something that would kind of help pop. And I actually decided to go really different, not stay in the same color family, and did a red, red, white, blue. blue. I like that. So That's it's cool. a little different, but I think it really contrasts, and I think it's going to show great. So the red was our challenge fabric. It is also the focus position, which would be in this large block here and this little bit on the border. Then our white, which once again has a little bit of that metallic um, look on it, the silver, which I love. And that's going to go in the background. And then, of course, our number three is the blue, and it will go here in the border and this other block here. I just think this would be extra fun and and you know this and this is a thing too is when you look at your patterns and this one especially needs extreme contrast to see right. that design in the pattern right and let's face it we want to we want to show off those cool designs mm -hmm. that you've spent your time making because that's what gets people's attention it really does and this is going to really pop so not just blending with the colors within the fabric but truly going opposite mm -hmm. kind of on the color mm -hmm. wheel um, this kit is 8021834 it is called for love and country uh, the pattern that um, i chose to put with it is it's a snap it is available in an individual pattern or in the book pretty darn quick. All right, so the next one, this is a fun quilt that really shows off big blocks of color. And then it's divided by your number three fabric. And so it really kind of sets your fabrics off. And this one is called Byzantine Door. And um, this one is from our book, Quick and Easy Three Yard Quilts. It's one of our earlier uh, books, but gorgeous, gorgeous. Now in this one, it's kind of fun because again, Fran and I picked our fabrics out to match the challenge fabric. And in this case, the challenge fabric is actually the number two fabric. Because when we started looking, there are not many light, light color batiks. Mm -hmm. And I found that early on, one of the reasons I stumbled on batiks is there are very few. Now Fran found a white with some silver. <laughs> It's still kind of grayish. And the reason that is, is because the way batiks are, are produced mm -hmm. is that they do an, a dye and a wax. So they'll stamp it with a wax and they'll dye it. And any place the wax is um, adhering to the fabric will not take the color. Right. But okay. it still has a tendency to mush together. So you, it's almost impossible to have a really white uh, batik. So this one was the lightest. We I mean, I decided, and funny, <laughs> but Fran decided the same <laughs> thing the same. independently. Uh -huh. So we went looking for something that would give the contrast and that this would work with number two. So our number one fabric in this has this great undertone of kind of a, a brown green. And it's funny because I was able to find something that carried that same brown wow. green through there. So uh, those do contrast. So I'll be able to use this in the number one spot. And then this, so this goes in the number one spot and this will be that number three spot. And then at the same time, the number two goes here and that too is going to contrast with that number three. So this is a good one That's for you if you don't have, if, if you don't quite have a whole lot of contrast between these two, and you can tell by looking at the uh, black and white rendition that they're a little bit closer together, mm -hmm. but you divide them with an uber dark and that does the trick. Yeah. You know, that's a really good point. Sometimes a successful quilt, whenever you make it, when your colors are close like this, is choosing the right pattern. Yes. And in this case, you've definitely done that so that these two are mm -hmm. showcased and it's really bordered and highlighted with the third, the darkest, which is perfect. Well, you know, the 
uh, Donna Holmes works for us and she quilts all the time. And she came in the other day and she said, well, I just made a mistake. And, I, and she told me I could tell this story. And she said, I made the dancing bears. And she said, I did not get enough contracts with the claws. <laughs> so I was teasing her and told her she was going to have to let me use that quilt to show you on the show sometime about how you can think you're getting the contrast, but if you don't do that little take a picture, right. you might not know it's going yeah. to show up as contrast. So this one, the kit number is 8021835. The Midas Touch is the name of the kit. Byzantine Door is the name of the pattern, and that is either as an individual or in the book, Quick and Easy. And I love the name of that kit because it's I do just too. rich and golden. It's perfect. <laughs> it is perfect. <laughs> So for my uh, challenge fabric and kit, I chose the pattern gallery. And I like this one too, because it really is an easy one to go together. Um, you can also, once again, showcase a fabric like in these little squares here. So that's kind of why I chose this one so that I could showcase a fabric here. So let's put that on the table and look at those fabric kits. It's so as mom, as you were mentioning earlier, we both chose to place our challenge fabric in the number two position. And I also did that, which is very interesting that we both did that because we do pull these separately. Mm -hmm. We don't do them together, so we don't know what we're doing. So I thought it was so funny that we're yeah. on the same track there. I thought it was pretty funny too. <laughs> so I chose this wonderful leaf pattern here that has the rich kind of purples and oranges and golds in it. And that is the focus fabric. And that goes in the middle mm -hmm. here. Um, of the square, and I like that because I think that it's really going to pop here. Yes, then and, I, and I like it because it goes out on the border. <laughs> yes, and it's it's a little bit bigger print for a batik, and so that's going to be great on the border. Mm -hmm. And it coordinates really well with the next two fabrics, fabric two and three, so it'll really highlight those two. So here's our number two in our challenge fabric. It's going in these parts here, and then our number three fabric is the green which really brings out the green in the other two and it's going to be the border here. Go I ahead. do have pieces and parts for this so let's look at that. All right. All right. I was actually a little surprised whenever I did pieces and parts for this because I thought it turned out so gorgeous. Now, why were you surprised? All your quilts are gorgeous. <laughs> this is your quilt. I just made it. Well, I, I know I designed that one, but I know that when you do a quilt, they are stunning. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So when we make gallery, we're going to start out doing a strip assembly. And this is for the block here that's square and a square. Mm -hmm. And we're going to sew our number one and our number two fabrics together there. Love then we're going to cut a unit off mm -hmm. and then once we get our unit we're going to take and sew strips on each side of that unit and what that does is it gives us the center of the block and a block there square and a square all right and then i see it on the quilt oh let's do it this way though oh okay because what i have here is i have a finished, oh, a finished one, one. Ta <laughs> <laughs> so here's the finished one but we're not done with the block yet and I do have the seam allowances still on these pieces, so it does appear a little bigger. So then we're going to take our number three fabric and sew it on the top and bottom of that unit. Wow, that really pops. And then take it and sew it on each side as well. And I think that green highlights it so well. Yes. And then our alternate block once again, just a strip assembly, very simple, with our number two and our number three fabric. We'll Ooh. carry on that pattern. Is it not just Ooh, gorgeous? Ah, yes, it really, it is gorgeous. I was like, oh my, this looks so good. <laughs> I surprised myself. <laughs> I think batiks help, help you surprise yourself. I think so sometimes. Because it's almost like painting with these colors and you it's one of those things that you have to look at a little bit like color for your contrast and that's what you've done there even though there's a lot of similarity in these two colors um, with the golds and the rust yes. they really 
are not. It's just when you put it's them together. such an elegant, classy look to mm -hmm. me. And every once in a while, whenever I put one together, I just go, "Ooh, it's just so good." <laughs> And you know, I use the word movement a lot in a quilt because we want to see the design, but we also want movement. And somebody asked me one time, what do you mean by movement? And I said, what that does is it's moving your eye around the quilt yes. so that you just are enjoying the whole quilt. And so you look at this and you can just move around with your eyes and it's, see the contrast and the interest. It's, it's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Pattern selection on this one really made a difference too, I think. It's a beautiful pattern. Absolutely. Easy to do. Now the kit number on this one is 8021836. The kit name is Autumn Garden. It is using our gallery pattern, which is available as an individual, and it is also available in Modern Views, the book. Well, we used a lot for Modern Views, and it's funny because Modern Views, when I designed it, I used a lot of batiks oh. as well. Now, this was a challenge, and you are supposed to be voting, but we think that if you got some tips from this, that you are the winner. Absolutely, I agree. I still think I did really <laughs> well though, so <laughs> I think you should give me some extra votes. <laughs> well, give her all the votes that she wants because she was a great teacher for me. So be sure to check out our books. We do have a whole book bundle now that has all of our printed books in um, one bundle free shipping and a special low price. So you want to check that out as well. If you're just now starting your uh, collection, you'll want to get all of these books. They have eight patterns and they have the enlargements. They have the lap makes with one kit. If you want to make a twin, you need to order two kits. And if you want a king queen, four kits. Super simple and easy yep. to do and every book gives you the complete instructions. So it's Donna Robertson and Fran Morgan and hey don't forget share this video with your friends. Be sure and like the video, subscribe mm -hmm. and ring the little bell or hit the little bell and we'll notify you when a new video comes out. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>